Tell us a little bit about what you were doing when you became interested in the digital asset and crypto space. Yeah, I think I, I got into uh, the, the cryptocurrency blockchain space uh, four and a half years ago. Uh, but it was very uh, kind of like a coincidence because I was, I was practicing law and I was still studying, uh, finishing my master's degree. And uh, part of my studies, I was focusing on uh, contract law. And I wanted to find somehow to make contracts more efficient. And I was looking into technology uh, because I, I have previous tech background and uh, I was looking into AI and also how to make efficient contracts. And I stumbled upon on Ethereum, uh, which had this uh, smart contract capabilities, which means that you, uh, you have code that you, you publish into blockchain and it can't be changed. So whatever transactions uh, code you have there, uh, it's immutable in the sense, or community government, and that made me realize that you know you could actually do pretty cool stuff. And the same blockchain technology, I mean, obviously is behind Bitcoin and and you know other uh, uh, chains. And I, I think it's funny because you know before going into even law, I I used to develop fintech applications and. Somehow, I don't know why, I was actually very young. I mean, I've been always in my teens uh, programming something. But when I was 18 or 19, uh, I started to develop more finance applications. And, and I tried to find various ways to, to empower people with finance. And, and somehow, all of my startups didn't more end up being a startups, actually. They were just projects. And, and that got me actually in, in, in the blockchain space to develop financial applications, which is today like decentralized finance and, 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 and DeFi, what it's called right. today. So it's kind of an interesting journey. Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've often joked that DeFi is the hottest topic that very few people understand. Uh, and it's great to have you here so we can kind of understand uh, what the opportunities you saw were in the space uh, and what you think the ultimate applications and how this can really add value to the world. Now, Avi wasn't the first platform that you uh, worked on that you developed. Tell us a little bit about your first foray into this space, what the need or opportunity you identified was and what the solution was that you worked out. The first project was called ETHLAND, which was short for Ethereum Lending. So when I started to look into smart contracts, and uh, I wanted to do a financial transaction, which is a loan transaction where the borrower has an incentive to repay the loan. Now, when we look at uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, they are pseudo-anonymous and, and, and how blockchain works. So uh, you have addresses and they don't have names associated to those addresses. Right. So let's say if I send funds to some other person, how what incentivizes that other person to repay those funds back? And what we realized that actually these cryptographic assets could be used as a collateral because they have value. They are traded in a secondary market. And we created a, a, a system where, which was on smart contracts where you could put a, a cryptographic asset as a collateral and borrow another asset or at the end of the day, stable points. And this was just a small project that we created, ended up being a community. And <laughs> we never envisioned that uh, something like Aave would evolve from there. But right. I'm glad it did. Right. Stani, I think that's such a great explanation because it starts almost with the first principles about how you uh, derive this idea and why it was possible. So basically, uh, just to review your point, um, if you think about what the digital asset space is, it's kind of the opposite of the traditional lending space. If you go into a bank, they're going to want to know your name, your mother's name. They're going to want to know your social security number. They're going to want to know a whole lot about your credit and borrowing history. And on the internet, uh, obviously, you don't know any of that information. Everyone is anonymous. You just have a, a wallet address associated with an individual. So the question, the problem that you identified is, how can you lend in an environment where there isn't trust? And the conclusion you reached was that effectively you could stake collateral that you already owned that you could place into the system that would work uh, as something that could be taken or seized by the lender if you didn't pay back the loan. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so how did that work out? What were the experiences and what were the lessons you learned when you were doing that? I think it worked well to the extent that we, we matched the peers. So let's say you might have a lender that, that gives a offer, um, 
how much the lender will be willing to give funds, let's say stable coins, to what interest. And on the other side, you would have borrowers that are that were giving uh, asking for loans, and we we basically order match the, the market. The problem back in Ethland days was that there wasn't stable coins in the beginning, so we had to kind of like be very crafty and 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 the the liquidity that was borrowed was Ethereum, so the use case was very very narrow, and and also the user experience was very very difficult compared to today. Uh, even today, we have still uh, challenges on the user experience in, in the whole DeFi system. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think what we learned is the, the key kind of component is that, uh, you know, once the economy is growing, let's say decentralized finance, that there is not just Ethland or Aave, that there's there's other things, there's fiber network, there is uh, curves for stablecoin swapping, there is uh, something like Maker where you can... Uh, put assets as a collateral and, and mint a stable coin that you can then deposit to Aave. Uh, once there's this kind of like an ecosystem and all of these smart contracts work together in the sense that if you build something, uh, you know, a new product, financial product, it talks with each other products, that will create actually the, the traction. So I think that's what we learned. So we were very early with our product right. those days. But today, today it's different. Now you have this, this wide economy and ecosystem in decentralized finance. Yeah. I guess the first question I have, and this probably gets to some of the issues that we're going to discuss later when you're talking about Ethland, is this idea is if you're borrowing and lending uh, in different currencies, you could think about this as borrowing in dollars and and collateral uh, in euro. Obviously, those relationships can move. In other words, the price of one can fall and the price of the other can rise. So when that happens, you've got this challenge because the collateral may not be equal uh, now to the amount of the loan that you took out uh, if the collateral value falls relative to the value of of the currency you're borrowing in. So talk a little bit about what you did to solve that challenge uh, the first time around. Yeah, in the beginning, it was pretty much on the lender. So lender lender would be able to repossess the collateral if the if the value of the collateral decreased to the amount that was close what was borrowed from the system. But later, we understood that kind of like, as a lender, you are more interested in just providing assets that other, others can borrow, so provide, being a liquidity provider, as we call it. And then uh, we we took the, the role of liquidators and, and we, we created this kind of a network where uh, anyone can actually uh, be the, this kind of like a repo, repo man and take the collateral and return the funds back into the protocol and mm-hmm. manage this risk. And it works pretty well because uh, we have roughly over 100 uh, liquidators running in 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 Aave, not just in Aave, but they're liquidating in other protocols, and uh, you know that that makes the, the protocol st- stronger because you have this network that are competing on who can get the uh, collateral and get the incentive for li- liquidating. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.